In this new segment of Advisor Revelations, the DPL team will discuss how to evaluate new solutions and address current challenges and the strategies that can help you grow your firm and AUM. Welcome to the Advisor Revelations podcast. This is Tim Rimbowski, the VP of Member Success here at DPL. And joining with me today is Jonathan Barth. Hey, Jonathan, great to have you on today. Yeah, thanks for bringing me in today, Tim. Excited to talk about what we've seen this year and what we expect uh, in 2023 with our member firms. Yeah, so just some context for everyone. Today on our podcast, what we want to do is talk a little bit about what we saw in 2022, which was a wild year from the start to you know, low rates, high rates all over the place, the market volatility. It's just been a wild year. So on this episode, we want to talk about what we saw happen this year that was different than previous years. We also want to talk about kind of what we're expecting in 2023 as we move forward. But before we get started, just a reminder, subscribe to the podcast. Also, go out to the DPL website and anything we talk about today where you want to schedule an appointment to learn more, you can do that on the DPL website. So create a login and uh, go to our team page and you'll be able to schedule a time to talk about any of these topics that we go through today. So this year has been a wild year, right? We started out this year a little rocky with all the Russia-Ukraine stuff, with the market being volatile there. Then it kind of settled down. And then we had rates rising, inflation going out the wazoo. Just for somebody that's talking to advisors you know, every day, what was this year like? What were you hearing from advisors? How was the year compared to you know previous years that you've done this? Yeah. Well, it was definitely different, right? 2022 proved to be a really challenging year for advisors. They had to deal with some things that they haven't seen impact their financial plans and portfolios in almost a decade. If you think about it, those advisors who are later in their career, they've seen this before. But those advisors who are in their 40s and 50s, you know, where they're really at the peak of their earning career and earning potential, they haven't had to deal with some of the market downturns with inflation, rising rates, and you know, double-digit losses in both the bond and the equity market. And so it really created this perfect storm where a lot of advisors were trying to find unique solutions, right? They felt, at least through the conversations that I've had with our member firms, that their back was up against the wall a little bit, right? Clients were spending more, right, because of inflation. And for the first time in almost a decade, they started to see negative returns in their portfolios and on their statements. We had the COVID downturn back in 2020, but that was more of a V-shaped recovery rather than this, where it's been just almost 12 full months of bad markets. And that's challenging. So we've had a lot of conversations of advisors looking for unique solutions to de-risk portfolios, provide some protection, but also be able to you know, more efficiently solve for income. So all of that to say, really challenging year for advisors. And it's really challenged and forced advisors to find some of these unique solutions many of which I think we're going to talk about here today with both principal protection strategies and de-risking and mitigating sequence of returns risks. Yeah, no, it's super helpful, John. It sounds like it was a, an interesting year for sure. You know, one thing that we did see that was very interesting, you know, just looking at the industry as a whole on the insurance side, there is record sales of insurance products, you know, all types of annuities that we haven't really seen since some of the financial crisis times, 2008, 2009, some of those years where we you know, see a lot of people flocking to in the past, everybody flocked to variable annuities with income riders, but we saw a different trend this year. We saw people flocking to fixed products, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. So if you look at kind of all the industry data, there was record flows in Q2 and Q3. Obviously, we're not done with Q4 yet, but I'm guessing it'll be another record in Q4 of people just flocking like crazy to fixed and index products. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of industry as a whole. And we're seeing RAs do that now too, which is something we've never seen, right? Most RAs historically have always used kind of that investment only variable annuity, just kind of that, you know, 1035 vehicle. But yep. we saw a new trend this year where the fixed products actually almost tripled what the variable annuities did yep. just in the RA space. And we'll go through some of those data points in a second. But yeah, tell us about that, Bart. Like as you were having conversations this year, you know, typically you might have been talking more about just annuity replacements, variable annuities, things of that nature. How did it change this year where it's more about, you know, fixed type solutions and principal protection? Right. Well, what's that saying? The squeaky wheel gets the oil. <laughs> A lot of advisors have started to deal with negative returns in their fixed income. And so that's the squeaky wheel for a lot of advisors. 
through the relationships and conversations that I'm having with some of our largest and most strategic RIA member firms, they look at the financial plan and the portfolio where the equities can take care of some of the longer term inflationary spending, that long term growth. But when we're looking at fixed income, that's really what you depend on to be the ballast of the portfolio, right? To be able to mitigate when equities are really far down and, you know, you're going to have some stability from the fixed income portfolio. That didn't happen this year, right? And with rising interest rate environment, you can't expect that to happen. And so to my point earlier, it really challenged advisors to go out and find unique solutions. And so what we found a lot of advisors coming to DPL with the problem of, Hey, I've got this 60, 40 client, you know, they look like they were good in their financial plan, but their spending's increasing. We don't want to necessarily tell them to spend less. We don't want to tell them to work longer. So what are things that we can do now, you know, two, three years from retirement, or maybe we just got into retirement. What are solutions that we can use to mitigate sequence of returns and to get better than bond like performance? And that's going to naturally lead us to, you know, fixed index annuities, fixed annuities, MIGAs, which are multi-year guaranteed annuities, a version of a fixed annuity, and then even some RILAs as well, which we can get to a little bit later. But from a fixed standpoint, the fixed index annuities and the fixed annuities are fantastic solutions for a bond alternative strategy, right? Those advisors who come to us with that 60-40 portfolio, a lot of times through our conversations... We started going from 60-40 down to 60-20-20 or 60-30-10, where that last 10 to 20% of a pre-retiree or retiree's portfolio, well, that's going to an annuity. And that's going to a fixed annuity that provides 100% principal protection, which their fixed income can't provide. And it's going to provide bond-like returns. And so for a lot of advisors, they were able to very clearly look at, hey, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Client. We own this current bond mutual fund. We own this current you know, bond ETF. It's not performing and we don't anticipate it to perform or to do its necessary function within the portfolio. This annuity can replace it, right? And it can provide similar type performance. It's going to have a better risk profile because we're eliminating all of the losses. And that's really become a fantastic solution for some of our largest firms. So when you share that, you know, the fixed products have done triple what the variable contracts have done. That's not surprising to me at all, right? That's exactly what I would expect from the front lines and, you know, having these day in and day out conversations with advisors. I would expect, yeah, the fixed annuities and the fixed index annuities significantly more attractive to advisors um, from both an accumulation standpoint and then income as well, because you can add lifetime income on that and keep those equities invested for a longer period of time, it really just alleviates a lot of the stress of the portfolio. So, yeah, John, everything you just said, you know, let's put some data behind that for a second, right? So here's what we saw at DPL this year that was very interesting. So of all the cases that we worked on at DPL this year, only 29% was variable annuities, which is completely yeah. almost opposite of what we've seen historically, <laughs> right? Right. Put some other data behind that, right? When we talk about some of the... Solutions you're saying advisors were looking for new solutions. What are some new things? You know, one is the the RILA, the buffer annuity, the registered index linked annuity. Um, if anyone's familiar with that, it's almost like a structured note type solution, which we've seen a lot of awareness of that growing, even with like the ETFs that are available, some of the defined outcome options. Mm -hmm. um, they're available in the annuity space as well. We saw 21% of everything we worked on this year was in that RILA. It's almost as big as the variable annuity now, mm -hmm. which Backs up exactly what you're saying, Jonathan, where people are looking to, to basically find some protection on their equities. Yeah. And they're doing that through some of these types of solutions. The other part of this, too, is if we just look at, you know, pure principal protection, no downside, so complete, you know, protection all the way on, 50% of everything we worked on this year was in that category. Yeah. You know, then that split up, you know, about 35% in those index annuities, which has that upside you talked about. And 15% kind of just in that plain vanilla, you know, multi-year guaranteed annuity. But what we're seeing is advisors, you know, who have always just believed in, hey, let's just do the standard 60-40. We'll do the variable annuity for the tax deferral and we'll kind of let everything ride. 
What we're noticing is people that have historically done that are now saying, hey, maybe we need to add some protection yeah. when we think about insurance, which is, I mean, you think about insurance, that's what insurance is for, right? It's for protection, right? <laughs> so it's very interesting. We're seeing RIAs now not just use annuities as a 1035 vehicle, we're actually seeing them use for the actual insurance guarantees mm-hmm. on some of these things, which is super interesting back to exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what the conversations we're having right now. You know, it's unique and there's been some good academic articles and some pieces that have come out from one of DPL's favorites, David Blanchett. I think it looks at, you know, the year of 2022 and it shows the performance of equities. Well, equities are down. It shows fixed income. Well, fixed income's down. It shows crypto. Crypto's down, but inflation's up. And so all of these different asset classes are down, but what's not down is a fixed index annuity. Right. The worst a client could ever do inside of an annuity with principal protection is zero. Right. That's the worst situation that you could have. Well, that's great because guess what? Zero is way better than a negative return on any part of your portfolio. But from a a Ryla perspective specifically, we've seen a lot of advisors start to look at those different types of annuities, right? The registered index linked annuities. Part of that, I believe, is because when markets are down and there's volatility, advisors go and they look for alternative strategies, right? And where do you go to look for alternatives? You go to structured notes, you go to ETF solutions that provide buffers and caps and help to mitigate the sequence of returns risk from the portfolio. Well, a registered index linked annuity does that exact same thing, right? Gives you significantly more upside potential, but still provides the protection for those most common downturns in the market, right? Those zero to negative 10%. If you can take out that distribution part of the return, we've got a lot of upside and in really just those, you know, 10th percentile type of returns, the worst of the worst, you still have some protection there. And I think you've seen a lot of advisors come around to that idea. The Rylas in particular, at least earlier this year, had 36 straight quarter over quarter growth in sales numbers. That's only continued. And that's probably going to continue going into next year as well. But yeah, John, exactly. in 2022 has actually been a great year for the insurance carriers, how they could build these products, right? Because some of these actually yeah. thrive on volatility. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, you know, a buffer annuity, a Ryla, it actually is better for the consumer the more the volatility is because they actually price it so much better than the consumer. Right. We talk about these fixed annuities, these MIGAs that represented half the cases. Those actually thrive when rates are higher. And the great news is you can lock in those rates for the long term, right? <laughs> so 2022 is actually a fantastic year, you know, for purchasing these contracts because they all got so much more rich because of all this. Mm-hmm. The other thing I want to talk about, Jonathan, you know, when we look at the cases that we worked on in 2022, for one of the first times, I mean, majority of the cases were actually new assets flowing into insurance products, not just recycling of an old one. Yeah. If we think about, you know, how RAs have always worked with annuity products, it's typically been just an exchange of an old product. And that's kind of how this has always worked out. But now what we're actually noticing is more money is flowing into these products from cash, from a brokerage account. It's not just recycling old annuities. Mm -hmm. It is completely new dollars coming in, which, you know, when we think about the RA industry, they haven't had access to these products until the last couple of years. So what we're actually seeing is, you know, it was an access problem. It wasn't a problem with annuities, right? We're actually seeing that if RAs have access to a product, they actually use it. It's not just about, you know, any type of preconceived notions. These products are quality products. It seems like access has always been the issue. Yeah. And it's you know been a really great environment for advisors to take advantage of these annuities now. One is, yeah, having access to the annuities. You have you know different ways to be able to see and kind of do your diligence on the annuities, particularly through the tools and calculators that are on the DPL website, which is another reason to go out and register for it. You can do full product diligence. You can go in and see the nuts and bolts and and how the sausage is made, and then also see what impact that provides to the client and then to your firm. So access has been a huge part of it. But then also, you know, a rising interest rate environment makes the products richer, right? As you pointed out. And I think we've seen a lot of advisors who are listening to their clients. You know, clients don't like to lose money. Clients don't like to be 
out of bounds with their allocation, right? I mean, clients want these annuities. It's something that they desire to have within their financial plan and within their portfolio. Now it just makes sense to get the best type of return and the best type of annuity that you can get. You do that in the commission-free space, right? Because those products are better for the client compared to their commission counterparts. So the rising interest rate environment makes the annuities better, right? Richer in benefit. Clients are now, you know, speaking louder. You know, they're making sure their voices are heard. They're sharing their opinion that they want these types of solutions. And then for RIAs, it's never been easier to access annuities and it's never been easier to put an annuity in place in 2022. And in 2023, that's only going to get easier, right? Those barriers of doing business, the ease of doing business, being able to scale and automate what we always say are the three phases of the annuity, the decisioning, the purchasing, and the managing has never been easier for advisors. And that's only going to get better in the future. Yeah. And we're seeing exactly that happen. If we look at 2022, the DPL member base basically doubled in 2022. I mean, we had record numbers of advisors coming to our platform and wanting to have access to these solutions. You know, we've been out in the the market here for five years now, and literally, you know, we doubled what we did in the first four years this year. So we just saw a huge adoption from advisors in 2022. So, you know, obviously 2022 record year in all categories. What about 2023? <laughs> you know, what are you seeing in 2023, Jonathan, as you're talking to advisors wrapping up the year, you know, what are some trends you think that we're going to see next year? I mean, obviously, I think, you know, people are still going to be worried about protection. Mm -hmm. That's not going to change anytime soon. But, you know, what are you hearing from advisors? What are kind of your predicted outcomes for 2023? Yeah, well, I heard an economist one time at a conference and he always joked about how he loves being an economist because he's never right until the end of the year when he makes the end of year forecast. So whatever I say now, I want to be able to hedge my bet and say, come back at the end of 2023. And then I'll tell you what my prediction was for 2023. That way I'm always right. But it's probably gonna be more of the same, right? It's probably gonna be more of principal protection strategies. Most of the advisors that I've talked to either believe we're going into a full recession sometime in the future, or if we're gonna have positive returns, they're probably gonna be pretty muted, which is going to once again, provide some stress to the portfolio, right? We haven't seen these kind of muted market returns or even negative market returns for about a decade. And so now we've got to find alternative solutions. So from an annuity standpoint, the conversations we're having with advisors are, hey, as clients are coming in for annual reviews, let's get some of the cash they've been sitting on back into the market through an annuity that has principal protection. Let's go ahead and redeploy those assets from underperforming fixed income into annuities that have principal protection. That's definitely from the annuity side. Now, obviously, we're talking to a lot of RIAs who are not a part of the DPO membership as well. And I expect January and February to be extremely busy months for us to be able to get some of these really large strategic RIA firms that are doing their annual kickoffs, having DPL be a part of that. You know, these large roll up firms. I'm going down to Texas in February to do a presentation to over 200 RIA firms that all roll up to one larger firm. That's a big deal, right? I mean, that is going to be significant growth to our membership base. And I would expect that only to continue. We're hearing from so many firms that are looking to, you know, break away, find new solutions. And even in the RIA space, just find alternative strategies to continue to find organic growth within their business, that's going to continue to happen. So if you're listening to this podcast, if any of this sounds interesting to you, if you're looking for organic growth or you just even want to hear you know, what 1,600 other RIAs are doing, which is a lot of RIA firms, right? And you think about the number of advisors that that represents, go to dplfp.com, check out the tools and calculators and set up a time to talk with a consultant because what we're doing is extremely impactful and it's only going to continue to grow within the industry. Yeah, yeah. Well said, John. Yeah, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Like we mentioned, we're super excited. You know, 2022 is a successful year all around and we were super excited how we were able to serve RRAs and help them achieve, you know, some really good outcomes. Even though it was a rough year with the market, there are so many success stories where the RAs were able to use some of the DPL solutions and tools 
to, you know, save a client, to keep a client with them or, you know, to help them, you know, gather some assets back with the market being down. So there's just so many, there's countless success stories for 2022. And John, it sounds like you're saying, hey, 2023 might be even better. So, you know, we're really excited moving here into 2023, just with how the tailwinds, with how advisors now are really very receptive to these solutions there. And, you know, like we said, we're seeing new money flow here. So we're providing the access, providing the solutions, and we're really excited to see how 2023 is going to turn out, probably another record year as well. So thanks for joining me, Jonathan. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. As Jonathan mentioned, definitely go out to the website. After this, check out dplfp.com. Schedule a conversation with one of our consultants so that you can learn how all these other advisors are retaining clients and having so much success, even during such a uh, difficult time in the market. So thanks, everyone, for joining for listening. To hear more advisor revelations, go to dplfp.com and subscribe on your favorite podcast streaming app.